process for the judges is narrowing that 91 list down to eight superior actors and eight honorable mention actors, uh, all of whom uh, receive awards. She was the last superior actor award named, and the only person who had higher anxiety in this theater than me was her mother, uh, because I thought if, if she can't get an honor or a superior actor award, there's no way the rest of us are going to have a good afternoon. Our superior actor playing Elizabeth Marie Nostrand, Danica McDonald. <laughs> we received one Superior Actor Award and one Honorable Mention Award. About a month ago, I looked at him and said, I wouldn't be surprised if you get an acting award, and he just did not believe me. He's got the award, still hasn't said something along the lines of, you were right, Jeff. You knew what you were doing, you know what talent is. Our honorable mention, and at this point I've got to explain, uh, we made this show more difficult than it had to be. Uh, we changed the setting. And what you saw, at least from our minds, was the internal struggle Liz was having in her mind as she came to grips with the new normal. So everybody else on stage wasn't her friends, wasn't high school people, these were all facets of her personality. Now, no judge got that. In fact, Pam Sucre was the only person who watched this show that got it. Uh, but, who? Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry got it? So there are two people <laughs> out of like 150 that got it. Apparently, I outthunk a couple of UND graduate students in theater. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, they're all, but it, what it did is it gave our ensemble something to do, a character to play. Uh, receiving a Honorable Mention Acting Award and playing Liz's Sense of Anxiety. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Bill. All right, uh, let's start way over there. When you fight with somebody in your mind, when you're having that argument in your mind, who are you always arguing with? In this show, Liz was always arguing with her sense of logic and reasoning. Mickey Moan. Playing Elizabeth's sense of caring and compassion and kind of sort of almost falling off that box. That's, that's what, he told, what he told the judges. Kind of sort of falling off the box. He was playing our preacher as well, Walt Lawson. I have never seen an actor struggle so hard to grab a character. Adam agonized over Grampy Nostrand. How does Grandpa stand? How would he look? How would he sound? And it was one of my favorite scenes in the whole show, that whole leaning up against the shoulder, looking out. He nailed it. Playing uh, Liz's sense of leadership and dedication, Adam Reisted. <laughs> I have looked twice. I have a long history of getting those two confused. Playing her sense of friendship. And honestly, she came a long way, considering you've been on stage twice. Since seventh grade. She's been on stage with me twice and came a long way in determining how would friendship look? How would friendship act? How would friendship talk? I really loved her character, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Gorman. There were a couple of the people that I thought might get acting awards. Our problem was that we performed at 8.45 in the morning and uh, they made the determination at 4 in the afternoon. And after I eat lunch, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, so I can't blame them. But playing her sense of dependency, and if you look at the still pictures that John took during the performance and during rehearsals, the motion on her face is just perfect. Molly McCoy. <laughs> Aaron never worked. He had this down from the first day of rehearsal. He had this done flat. The only character wearing a watch, because he is Liz's sense of impatience. Aaron Reiston. Oh, I haven't forgotten them yet. But there were two kids that fell into place last, literally a week before we finally got them. Um, we had, a, they had Aaron Fisher walking around as Liz's sense of selflessness. How would selflessness look and talk and stand? We ain't got a clue either. <laughs> so we changed her to self-esteem, which right now is pretty low. And from then on, she was the last person on stage, the last person off stage, and
It always looked like she was about ready to cry. I loved it. Aaron Fisher. <laughs> and Shelby Tilton, uh, she was originally Liz's sense of ambition, correct? How would ambition stand? We ain't got any clue. And so a week beforehand I said, Shelby, I want you to be her sense of vanity, and I want you to think supermodel. <laughs> And that's what she did. She saw the corner of my stage picture all the time, thinking supermodel. The hair goes back. She slouches in her box. She nailed it right away. Ladies and gentlemen, Shelby Tilton. How exactly do you become a character if all you have to ring is a bell? I put the bell in the school office one day, and they called Stephanie Overton down to she walked down from music class, got this bell. You can find anything on eBay. This is a great bell. And she walks back to music class, and Mrs. Harlow says, What are you doing with that bell? And she looked at her and said, Jeff. Okay. That's cool. But she figured out a way to make that character, the subconscious, Liz's subconscious, become a character ringing only a bell. Stephanie Overton. work. This television is hooked up to one of the school, this is my television. Um, the television is hooked up to an iPad from the school, which we found an app that does a scoreboard. The uh, Josh's iPhone is hooked up through Bluetooth to the iPad, so on his phone is the control board for the screen, um, which he then makes, yeah, it's, it's more confusing than I had, uh, but I've got to tell people, everyone asked, how did we stay on time? How do we get so close? When mom and dad got married, Walt comes out in this big white robe, and he stands right here. And while he stands right here, Josh adjusts the time and the score. <laughs> we weren't on time for 30 minutes, we were on time for four and a half. And the only people that caught it was the school performance. There were about three kids in that corner that saw over his shoulder. But it, it was brilliant, and he's my tech guy. Uh, Josh Brosey. <laughs> here are the auditions. Uh, the audition protocol was you stand up here, you give your name, you give your uh, grade in class. Uh, if you have a starship, what would your starship's name be? Uh, and then you had to give a one minute prepared monologue. If you weren't auditioning, you still had to come up here, give your name, your grade, and then say, I'm not auditioning. So in comes this woman I've never met before. And she walks up, Claire Isabel, hello, my name is Sarah, I am in, what grade are you in? Sure. <laughs> the name of my star, what was the name of your starship? Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> and she said, I'm not auditioning. I'd like to tell you folks that I said baloney. That's gotta be what I said. And I said, you will audition right now for us. And she rattled off a one minute prepared monologue and it was good. <laughs> and so I looked at her and said, you've got, to, you've got to roll with us. We're gonna carry you with us. She was our technician and gave me the best line of rehearsal. Wednesday night in the back of my pickup truck, she leans over to Shelby Tilton and says, the drama club is really just a support group in disguise, isn't it? <laughs> and I went, yeah, we got our. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Scheitel. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, first off, to the family of the cast members, we moved rehearsals. We rehearsed at 7 in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, families of the cast members, I'm sure that wasn't easy getting a teenager up there. Uh, Mrs. Patty Onison from the high school, uh, the plan was that I was going to run the tournament so that she could concentrate on regional volleyball. We didn't know about semifinal football at the time. Uh, and then I got this job, which means she had to go back uh, and run this tournament as well. She's done a lot for me to make sure I have all of my forms and all that stuff, because I'm really great with paperwork. I'm sure you all know that. Uh, but she's helped us get along, Mrs. Patty Onison. <laughs> and finally, the new school high school principal, Mr. Race, who had to sign a profanity waiver for a man he's never met before. I appreciate the help. 
Uh, finally, uh, join us for Once Upon a Mattress, which is the musical retelling of the fairy tale The Princess and the Pea. That's our spring musical this year. We're running it April 17th, 18th, and 19th. There will be four shows. Uh, we sold out the run on Footloose. We sold out the run on The Wizard of Oz. So we're adding a fourth show. We don't know when that is yet. But auditions. Auditions. Are you in seventh grade? Yes. Good job. Auditions are December 11th at 7 o'clock here at the Avalon Theater. And finally, uh, everybody asks, well, how can you help? Uh, well, uh, in the musicals, I read between 6 and 10 musicals a year. Uh, and now I'm supposed to read between 6 and 10 one-act plays. I don't do that much reading. Uh, if you guys enjoy reading, uh, would you please consider reading a one-act script or two for us? If you can find something that speaks to you, let us know. And uh, one of the things that we're going to improve uh, over the next year or so is costuming. And in order for me to improve costuming, I need people who can sew. Uh, so if you know someone who sews, uh, please consider asking them if they'd help us out. Um, when you look at the tab sheets, you see that there wasn't any clear consensus from the judges. Every judge gives a ranking point. First place, second place, third place, so on. One judge gave their first place ranking to Park River. One judge gave it to Thompson. And one judge gave their first place ranking to us. They all have 30 performance points to give away. If you want to think about it this way, we start with 30 points, and as we do something wrong, we lose points. Uh, Park River was first with 81 total points. Out of total 90, uh, Laramore and Mayport were tied for second with 79 points. So we came up, out of possible 90, we had 79 points. We did things really well. Uh, and anybody who knows me knows that I don't like to lose. Uh, and so next year, I'm sure most of you will come back and uh, we'll hit her a little harder at 7 in the morning. I'm not going to miss that part at all. Uh, the final thing we're going to do is let's do a cast photo. Uh, for the yearbook, uh, Mrs. McDonald, do you have the, phone, the uh, camera somewhere? Yeah, but I have Fantastic. Really a phone, yeah, because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, so let's do the cast picture, and then we'll run the cast outside. You can shake their hands, and then uh, family of the cast members, uh, we're going to try to clean up the theater uh, before we leave tonight. Thank you.